think she was. She's really We was in Revival all week. Yes, sir. You have messed up my seat. Did you do that? Right there, Lily. Every need that's been mentioned, Lord, I know you're able, I know you need control, Lord, just do that, that only you can do. Help us, Lord, as we try to sing, Lord, just move upon the choir, Lord, just lead out and direct, just have your will, Lord, I will testify to God's accounts to preach, Lord, just give me what we need to hear, help him, Lord, fill him up, and Lord, I pray, Lord, if there's one lost this, this evening, Lord, I pray you save them, yes. just deal their heart, Lord, draw them to you, just those are cold and back, said, have your will and wait, but thank you and praise you, you're going to glory for it all, in Jesus' name we do pray, Amen.
Amen. You do Jesus loves me. We'll do that while we take the offering up. It's good to be here tonight, ain't it? Amen. Good to be in God's house. Good to see you in God's house. And so good to see those in the parking lot, those watching by way of Facebook. We appreciate that. i uh, just give you the announcements right quick, and then we'll sing this. And it's good to have Jack and Diane. They'll probably sing one for us, we hope. And uh, we'll just go as Lord leads. We appreciate it. Uh, good to see Brother Mike, ain't he? Amen. Amen. Uh, you miss him over there in the corner. Amen. He's a, he eggs you on. Helps you out. And uh, we do appreciate Good to see him back. Pray for his family. We've been praying for him. And uh, remember the women's Bible study tomorrow night, uh, Monday, March the 1st. That'll be tomorrow night, won't it? Yeah. Tomorrow night. Uh, drop in baby shower for dawn Sunday, March the 7th, from 3.30 to 5.30. Remember that? Getting close, ain't it? Yes, you do remember that. And then the Foothills Camp, any of the young people want to go, uh, just let us know and we'll make sure you uh, we'll take the fun. We'll use funds for it. It's not necessarily for your funny games, but, and you'll have fun there, believe me. You'll have a time. Do they stay overnight? Uh, we'll find out. Do they stay overnight? They do, don't they? Okay, we'll find out. It's, it's got a way. May 15th uh, is when it's going to be, and we'll find out and get more details eventually as we get closer to it. Amen. Uh, give me some ushers. How about you, uh, fellas? You just want to take offering up? You want to take offering up? You can. Leland, help them out. Uh, man, I don't know what they're feeding this one right here, but, man, he's, he's grown up on us, ain't he? Uh, man, That's them mountain taters and stuff, probably. Isn't that right? Yeah, we do appreciate him. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Jack, would you ask blessings on this? Yes, sir. We pray you and thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the plan of salvation. Lord, we pray that you bless this offering. Lord, as uh, these young men take it up, pray, Lord, that you bless the offering and bless the giver. Bless those that have not to give equally. In the name of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So by saying, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves
Amen. Uh, I'm glad he loves me. You know why he loves me? Because uh, he first loved me first. That's why I love him? Because he first loved me first. And I'm thankful for that. You don't know love till you find out the love he has for you. Amen. Friends love you, come and go. But he loves you no matter what. It's an unseparated love, according to Romans chapter 8. Uh, he told the children of Israel, and as much as they failed him, as much as they would turn to other gods, he said in Jeremiah 31, he said, I love them with an everlasting love. Hey, that takes something to love somebody that rebellious. And I believe that's like your children, no matter how they get. You're going to love them. I believe the prodigal son, I believe his father loved him as much when he was out in the world as he did when he was home. Why? That's his son. It's his son, and I'm glad for that. We've got a lot to pray for, a lot of objects on our heart, a lot of objects, you know, God knows all about, help us pray for. Remember Arnold, Arnold Message said they voted him in up our Pilgrim's Way, is that the name of that church? Pilgrim Baptist. So let's uh, be praying for him up there. Uh, Brother Vestal, Josh Vestal. Uh, well, Megan called. Well, he texted me, but Megan called. They had five get saved this morning. Amen. Glory to God. You don't hear that often, do you? Uh, ain't that good? And uh, got, a, uh, got some folk been coming, and they've been bringing people when they come. Amen. You can't beat that. You get people like that in your church, you look out. God's going to do something. And uh, we're thankful. I never will forget Brother Scott Garland. He was uh, preaching revival for us over Upper Warnock Creek. And uh, it's back when Victory first started, when they first. Uh, and a lot of people got, don't know the story on, on all that. And, uh, but, uh, you know, it's not really a split. It, it is the church uh, that come from another place. But uh, a Victory... Uh, he said he'd go in on Sunday morning and said that folk could have people they invited to come and, and got to come to church. And Victory got pretty big there, didn't they, at one time. I think they run about 400 people, if I remember right. And uh, it came because folk inviting folk. And uh, people would come. People would hear about what God's doing. And people want to come, want to get in on it. I've been part of that at uh, Indian Creek. I've seen it there. And I've seen them join and be gone in two years. I have. They just want to get in and see what it's like for a while. Then it was gone. But we do appreciate you. We appreciate you being here. If you're visiting, appreciate you being here. We do. Boy, God's been good to us, ain't he? God's been better than good. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and uh, ask God's blessings on the service tonight. Brother Jeff's going to be preaching. So you be much in prayer for him. And, uh, you know, we've tried to give them all some time in the last little bit. And uh, we appreciate them. Want to encourage them. We really do. And, uh, you know, and, and this is what it's going to take. Be faithful to the church. Be faithful to back your pastor. And I'll preach you. You want to run around? You probably won't get to preach much. Uh, I believe you ought to back your church. It's the way it was with me. I left Indian Creek, or I'd left when I'd left Freedom. I told Lynn, I said, we're going to go visit around a little bit, because that's some preachers I enjoyed hearing. And uh, I went back then. I said, we'll go to Indian Creek one Sunday, and then, you know, then we're going to visit around. We're just going to visit some of my preacher friends and stuff. God wouldn't let me. I went in on Sunday morning, Indian Creek, and God said, this is where you need to be, right here, back in your pastor and back in your church. And so that's what I did. I sit there. I sit there at times. I, I know the feeling. Door's not opening. And I'd have to sit there. But in God's time, God would open doors. In these times when he did open, he opened them pretty good. I mean, it was abundant. And uh, there's a, a waiting. They are. Don't be impatient. Just wait on him. And he'll help you. He'll open them doors for you. And, uh, you know, and it ain't that I mean anything. It ain't. I ain't nothing. The Lord knows my heart. I feel the least of God's people. I tell you, I, he's put me pastor of Wind, uh, Wyndham Baptist Church, and I'm the under-shepherd. And, uh, you know, before you get out and have authority somewhere else, you're going to have to sit under authority. 
Amen. You're going to have to. You say, I don't want nobody telling me what to do. And, uh, hey, it ain't the, the preacher, it's God's the one that's doing it. And I promise you, if you preach, it'll be God telling me to let you preach. Amen. Because I'd love, there's preachers out there, I'd love to get to come. And God won't let me. He just had not Brother Terry Pace is a, a man of God. Man, I'm telling you, I mean those to Brother Terry Pace. Oh, good friend of mine, Alabama. And, man, I wanted to get him to preach, even talk to him about it. Over at Arrington Branch, I said, brother, I said, uh, uh, can we, maybe you get you to come to church, pray about getting you to come. And God just hadn't never let me get him. My pastor, he never would let me get him. I wanted to get him up at Freedom, and finally, there, uh, maybe before we left, God let us get him. You see, it's not who you get. It ain't a buddy system. People say, well, I, you know, I ain't going to get somebody to think my friends. Hey, I'm going to get who God says get, will I, you know, whether I know them or not. I never will forget he laid Brother Darren on my heart, Brother Darren Wilder. Oh, my goodness, what a preacher. And uh, I really didn't know him. And I actually talked to him. Before I talked to him, I looked him up on the website to make sure he was King James. And God telling me to get him. God ain't going to tell me to get somebody if they ain't. And uh, I never will forget we got Brother Darren and best revival we ever had. Twenty-something people got saved. <laughs> hey, I'll be obedient to him. And uh, I tell you, I appreciate the Lord. He's been good to us. Anybody got any objects before we pray? Anybody? Yeah. i seen that. Let's do it. Let's remember him. Anybody else? Amen. 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 Ever a time we need to be burdened for the losses now. Amen. Our children, our young people. It's scary to think about what they're going to grow up in. Amen. Scary. But we know there's a God to take care of them. And uh, that's everybody can and well, let's come together around the altar and go to the Lord in prayer. And then Diane and, and uh, Jack will, we'll get them to sing a couple. Then we'll turn Brother Jeff loose. Well, I'm glad we can come to approach the throne of grace boldly. Not a shame. Brother Jeff, lead us. Our Father, we're thankful once again for the privilege you've given us to be able to bow. God, what a uh, joy it is to be able to come to your house. God, been a good day. We thank you for your presence this morning. God, for the liberty. Thank you for allowing us to come tonight. Lord, I pray, Brother Jeff, God, that you use him. I pray for that lost that may be here tonight. God, I pray the Holy Ghost. God, we deal with them. Lord, save them before it's too late. And God, we'll honor you and we'll praise you. God, we love you. Thank you for our church and what you're doing. God, how you bless it. God, in spite of everything, the uh, virus and all that we're going around in this old world, Lord, I'm glad you're still on the throne. God, you're helping us and God, you've been with us. Lord, I thank you for what you've done, Brother Josh, this morning. God, there at Shady Grove, God, how you have moved and saved folk. God, I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, for uh, being with Arnold. God, uh, everything went there uh, as uh, maybe you wanted it to. I pray you bless him. God, give him souls for his labor. Thank you, Brother Mike, tonight being able to be with us. Lord, I ask you to help him. God, be with his family. Lord, I pray you be with uh, those that are sick. God, those going through storms. God, I just pray your will be done in my life. Lord, help us. God, whatever Father you, Father, should have us too. And we love you. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name we do pray. And it's in Jesus' holy name we pray this. Amen. 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 Jack, you just want to come sing a
I believe it's an A, Jerry. <laughs> I won't swear to it, but I believe it is. Okay. Because we is worthy, but because he loved us. We uh, it's been a been an old song that's kind of weighed on my mind for 
several weeks now. I used to get some of the young people to sing it <clears throat> to church. But uh, God, uh, God loved us enough to send his son and Jesus loved us enough to come down and leave a place like heaven, which is amazing in itself. But he did it anyway. And, uh, but uh, we, uh, it seemed like everybody's kind of worried, you know, nowadays. Uh, I, I thoroughly believe that this is the uh, best time, best opportunity, best chance to witness to the lives than there's been in, you know, no telling how long because, you know, when 911 hit, you know, they, they tore the tires down. You saw people, you know, the church is full for a while. You got COVID, you know, and, and the church is emptied. But you've got a lot of people that's asking questions. A lot of people is wondering why. Why this? Why that? You know, what's the best thing to do? I know, there's no doubt in my mind, what the best thing to do is to get saved. And it makes no difference if you die in a car wreck or you die with a heart attack or you live to be 99 years old. When you, when, it, when God, if you, if you're saved, when the last breath leaves your body, when God takes that breath away, you're in a better place, a lot better place than this. God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He
Because he lives. Amen. Well, Brother Jeff, you come preach to us, brother. say what an honor it is to be able to be back in God's house tonight and man I tell you just blessing when we feel the Holy Ghost moving through the church like we are tonight and the singing and man I tell you just I don't know where I'd be without him tonight well actually I could tell you where I'd be without him tonight I'd be in the devil's hell tonight if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me I'm going to be in two different places in Acts I'm going to start out in chapter 4 I'm going to be in verse 13 to start out, and then I'm going to go over to verse 31. While you're returning tonight, I want to ask you a quick question. I want to ask you, what kind of boldness do you have for God tonight? I want to just touch a few points that he's laid up on my heart and just go through and give them to you and hope to be a help to somebody. We need to find you a place, if you will, stand for the reading of the word. And we'll ask Brother Mike if he will bless the word tonight. Acts chapter 4, you can be seated. Acts chapter 4, verse 13. It says, Now when they had saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Chapter Acts uh, 31 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Tonight I ask the question, how much boldness do you have for God? When I bring that up, a lot of people, when you think of boldness, they think of being bold just in general life. But you know, we should have a boldness for God when we, when we come into church and we're studying the Word. And if you're saved by, word, by God's grace and by His blood, you should have a boldness that you should want to stand for Him. You should have a boldness about you that when you're telling others, about what he's done for you, you should have that boldness in you. And when you look up the definition of boldness, it says that we should have a willingness to take a risk, to have confidence and or courage. When you look it up in the King James meaning of it, it's to be bold like a lion. We need to be, that's what we need to be like. 
in this day and time that we're living in right now, there's so many people that don't want to hear the word of Jesus Christ. You mention Jesus, and they'll put their hand up in front of your face, or they'll walk off from you. But can I tell you, if there's ever a time that we need to be bold on the word of God, it's right now. Because we are living in a bitter world. We're living in a dying world. And there's so many that is just wanting to turn away from it. We need to be bold when we stand and we tell people about Jesus Christ. We need to be able to have the confidence to stand and tell them. And you see, if you got Jesus on you and you got the blood on you, and you should have that confidence. You should have that boldness. The first point I want to get to is be strong in God's Word. Well, preacher, what do you mean be strong in God's Word? We're doing, the first, we're doing one of them tonight. We're all gathered right here in this church to hear good preaching, to hear good singing, uh, getting meetings, read your words, study, allow God to show you the things that He wants to show you. When you read, pray. Read some more, but pray more than what you read. Allow the Holy Ghost to come down and touch you and show you the things. That's how you stand strong. That way when you're studied up and somebody comes to you and God's revealed things to you, you can... Tell them things of what Jesus is doing in the Bible and what he's going to do for them. If you're only reading your Bible or listening to the preacher on Sunday, you're not going to be doing too good. It's very hard to get in spiritually shape if you're only working out on Sunday. You can't do it. You're not going to do it. Be confident. Be confident when you're studying. Be willing to let the Holy Ghost come down and set down upon you. When you read over in Acts, it says there that the Holy Ghost come down and set up on each and every one of them and filled them with the Spirit. That's the way we should want to be. We should want the Holy Ghost to come down and set up on us. Yes, sir. Not just at home, but when we come in here. Could you imagine if every one of us got a one mind and one heart before we come into this building? What kind of service we could have? We'd blow the roof off this place. The Holy Ghost be sweeping through. And don't get me wrong. The Holy Ghost is here all the time. But could you imagine if we was all of one mind? Leave everything of the world outside these doors. Come in not wondering what God's going to do, but come in expecting God to do something. You know, Brother Randall uh, mentioned about Josh Vessel's uh, church, five getting in the altar and getting saved this morning. Wasn't nothing that Vessel done. But I guarantee you, they was all of one mind. It was all of one cord. They coming in to worship the one that could save them. And that's Holy Ghost drew them. Yes, sir. The seeds, you see, us preachers are, we're just, we plant the seeds. I can't save any of you, but I can plant that seed. Yes, and then every time you hear the singing, every time you hear the word preached, Water. it's getting watered a little bit more yes, and a little bit more. And eventually at, the roots take hold. And the next thing you know, you get under conviction. You say, well, preacher, I don't know if I've ever been under conviction. Let me tell you, you'll know. You'll know if you've ever been under conviction. Amen. You'll know when the Holy Ghost is dealing with your heart. Amen. I give my testimony all the time of Gouges Creek. Man, I knew when the Holy Ghost got a hold of me that night. You know, I, I, had to, I made excuses. I looked up and down the, the pew, yep. little bitty church at Gouges Creek. Lord, I can't even get out of the pew, but let me tell you, I was found determined I was either going to crawl under the pew or walk across the top of them one, but I looked up and my pew had emptied out and I could get to that altar and I got it right. You'll know when you're under conviction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be confident in your walk with God. What do I mean by that? Got to have faith. Got to have trust. So many of us will come up here to the altar or wherever it may be, and you'll bow down and you'll leave a burden at the altar, and the next thing, before you even get back to the pew, most of us are looking and saying, well, Lord, you going to do anything with it right now? You going to help me? Or we could go down the road and they're peeking around the corner saying, well, Lord, I dropped this off to you a week ago, and you still ain't moving. we got to have that faith. we got to have faith that God's going to move. His time is always on time. His plan is always going to be better than our plan. Amen. When Jeff tries to do it, Jeff messes it up. But when I allow God to get involved in it, it works out. It may not be the way that Jeff wanted it to work out, but it always ends up being better in the end. Hey, be confident in you walk. Trust in Him. 
We have somebody that, well, he tells us he'll never leave us. He'll go all the way to the end with us. He'll, he'll go all the way through. Have courage to stand when everything is upside down in your life. Did this King James Bible ever tell you that you wasn't going to go through trials, go through storms? I've never read anywhere in this Bible that says when I got saved that I wouldn't have issues in my life. But hey, if you're anchored to that rock and you're anchored in the right way, there ain't going to be nothing that's going to move you. Nothing. Jack, I think of you and Diane. You just went through a bad, bad situation. And the night you come in here and you testified, man, a lot of, that blessed me beyond belief. You know, other people, stay, stay anchored to that rock. Have courage to stand when things ain't going your way. You know, if we're not showing, if we're not projecting what God's done for us, we're not being as that city set up on the hill, if we're not staying as having that flavor of that salt, how can we expect others to want to come into church or to listen to us? You know, we gotta we gotta be we gotta have be strong, confident, we gotta have courage. We gotta be all these things for God. We gotta be bold. Me and my wife, we come in and we clean the church and uh I was up here wiping down the pews and picking up a few things. When you join up with the church, you read the church covenant. In the middle of that covenant, if you really pay attention to it, there's some pretty strong things in there that we're supposed to do with the church. Are we bold enough to do it? Do we do it? We all fail each and every day. But you know, we've we got to have that boldness about us. Like I said, we're in a dying world right now. They, they so many people out there that's rejecting God's word, but if we can show our boldness to them and stand strong, hey, be at light. Draw people in. Tell them what Jesus can do for them. Tell them what Jesus has done for you. I would dare to say they ain't a one in this church tonight could raise their hand and tell me that Jesus has ever failed them. Guarantee they couldn't. When you think on uh, having courage and all that I think of David and Goliath David little bitty fellow you know here's the army hid out in the woods that was supposed to be out there facing with Goliath you know why he was able to go out there and do the, and kill Goliath because he had the boldness of God on him because he stood strong in the word he had courage he believed that God was going to guide him I think of Noah. Could you imagine uh, God coming to you and telling you, hey, I want you to build an ark out in the middle of the desert? He stood strong in God's word. He believed. He had faith. Could you imagine what them people felt when that first raindrop slapped them in the top of the head? But you see, Noah had, he was strong, confident. He had courage. He built an ark, and he's also preaching to the people. Hey, you need to repent. You need to get it right. You know, time's running out. You can even go as far as the Hebrew boys. They got thrown in the furnace, but they had the courage, they had the faith, they stayed strong, they wouldn't bow down to the idols, wouldn't do nothing. They had trust in God. Last point I want to get to, and I, got, I have some verses, I'm bad to get ahead of myself a lot of times. When we have a boldness for God, we need to make sure that we got a clear vivid appearance to others yes, if you ain't got a clear vivid appearance of Jesus on your life and people see you acting out I use this all the time I work at Ingles I work around a bunch of people if I'm over there and frozen and I'm slamming doors and I'm saying things I ain't supposed to be saying how can I expect my testimony to affect anybody because they're going to stand back and say, well, he's supposed to be a preacher at Wyndham Baptist Church, and I just heard him in the stock room giving testimony. Now he's out here throwing green beans up against the door because he didn't have, have a good day. What do you think they're going to do? They're going to say, I don't want none of that. If that's, what, if that's what, what's offered, I'm already there. Why would I want to go get it now? You know, we, we need, and like I said, we've got to be like that city set up on a hill. How many of them has ever went up through uh, Linville on 105 on a foggy night or foggy morning and all them houses you can see up there and that little ski resorts and stuff up there? Yeah. 
Even when it's the foggiest, you can still see their lights beaming through. That's the way we need to be. That's the way we are to be. You know, our appearance, how we walk, how we talk, it affects people. Your, you, the way you live your life is your biggest testimony. That's the first thing people's going to see. When you, if you're out doing things you're not supposed to, that, that's in their, it gets in their mind, and man, they ain't going to let it go. They're going, they're going to use it, and they're going to say, well, I seen so-and-so doing this, and he's supposed to be a man of God, or he's a church member. Let your light shine as brightly as you can. If you look over in Philippians 1 and 14, it says, And many of the brethren in the Lord wax and confident by my bounds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. We shouldn't have no fear to speak what God's word. Jesus didn't have no fear when he took our sins and went to Calvary, so why should we not have the confidence to stand and preach the word? Or, hey, it ain't even just the preachers. I hear people say all the time, well, you're a preacher. You're supposed to be in the Word all the time. Can I tell you, if you're a born-again Christian, you've got just as much responsibility to be in this Bible as I do? You should be down in letting the, getting where you know the Word of God. Just as much your responsibility. Hey, when you, got, when you got saved and you got your life right, you become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Exactly. Amen, Brian, uh, Mike. That's the truth right there. Yes, I hear people say, well, I can't remember Scripture really well. Well, I can't either, but you know what? When you read it and you study it and you let God have it, it ain't, you remember it here, but when He's storing it up on your heart, you don't forget stuff that's stored up on your heart. Amen. You Amen. don't forget it. When I had to go and get a uh, MRI done a couple months ago, I had scripture up on my heart and I'd lay and I read over and over and over in my mind. You know, and I hear people say all the time, well, preacher, I can't pray at work. I can't read my Bible at work. Why can't you? If you've been in the Word and you've been studying it's stored up on your heart, yep. why can't you recite the verses that, that's on your heart? Yep. You're basically reading your Bible. Why can't you pray at work? You don't have to pray out loud. God's going to hear you. See, prayer don't come from right here. It comes from your heart anyway. Yep, that's what he hears. If, you, if you're praying and you're praying with your heart, God's hearing it anyway. Yes, sir. You can pray anywhere you want to pray. You can read your Bible anywhere you want to read your Bible. If you stay in it and you study and let God fill you up with it, ask them to empty you out and fill you up with His Word. Mm-hmm. There ain't nothing out there in that world that's worth being filled up with anyway. Poison. You get out here and you start dealing with stuff that uh, in the world, it's going to kill you spiritually. Yep. It may not do it, uh, it one, it, it'll, it beats you down, yes, and eventually it's going to kill you out spiritually. Yep. You know, that, that's my biggest fear of, of getting out of church and stuff like that. You know, so many people's got out of church for various reasons. It's a whole lot easier to get out than it is to get back in because they get out there in the world and they start dealing with the world. They get their eyes set up on the world. You can't draw them back in. You can beg them, and then most of them just, they'll make excuses. Yep. I have friends, I have family, I have co-workers. To this day, it's that way. You look over in Ephesians 3 and 12, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Have we got that boldness tonight? Have you got the boldness that he's going to carry you through? Jack and Diane just sung that song because of him. We know we got a greater future ahead. We know who holds the future. We got to have that boldness. We got to have that faith. Got to. I can't do nothing without him. Be honest with you. When I look back before I got saved, I don't even know how I walked around without Jesus Christ in my life. Can I tell you and my wife sitting back there in the back, she probably hate me pretty loud right here. I used to be one of the most hateful people you could talk to. I had no joy. I didn't have no pep in my step. I didn't care. Hey. <laughs> you know what? You know when I got the joy back in my heart? When I got my life right with Jesus Christ. When I bowed my head down and I, and I admitted, Lord, I need you. I need you more than ever. I'm, I'm shackled down with sin. I didn't have no joy. I was trying to fill a void that I could not 
feel on my own. The world couldn't do it. But whoo, thank God I met the man that could. Filled my heart up with joy. My life has went so much better. Our marriage is so much better now. My son's interested in church now. Hey, I, you know, got that boldness about me. But let me be clear. Like I said, I'm bad to get ahead of myself. Let me be clear. There is two forms of boldness. And one of them's pride. There is, there is a form of pride of boldness. If you got pride in you tonight, I'd get up here and ask God to take it away because that pride will kill you quicker than anything in this world. Hey, if you don't have that boldness tonight, there's a way to get it. You can come up here and ask God to help you grow in His Word. Maybe you're not walking as close to Him as you once was. Maybe you've lost a little bit of your boldness. He's standing doing this right here. He wants you close. Maybe you don't know Him tonight. Maybe you don't know Him at all. He's standing here like this with open arms doing this right here. He wants you tonight. I watched a little bitty video and I'm just about done before I come to church tonight. And they posed a question to a gentleman that said, why would a merciful God send anybody to hell? First of all, God does not send you to hell. But I want you to think about something. If you're on a boat and that boat's sinking and, some, and somebody looks over and says, hey, there's a lifeboat, and you refuse to get on that boat, so you, you, you're sinking anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, well... The blood of Jesus Christ is available to us all. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hey, He, he just sent that out there to you. His Son died on Calvary for you. There's your lifeboat right there. There's, there's the way to keep from going to hell. If you're on a sinking boat and somebody points out, hey, there's a life raft over here, and you refuse it, that was your decision. Just like not accepting Jesus Christ is your decision. You see, God don't send nobody to hell. You send your own self by rejecting the blood, by rejecting His Son. Yes, sir. Matthew 5 and 14, You are the light of the world. A city that is set up on a hill cannot be hid. I've already touched on this several times. That's actually one of my favorite verses that I even quote it on my way to work a lot of times. You know, we, we need to be a lot. We need to have that flavor of salt. It also tells you in your King James Bible that when salt has lost its flavor, it's good for nothing but to throw it out and allow men to trot up on it, to walk up on it. That ain't how I want my salt to be. God didn't give us that light to not put it up on that candlestick. He didn't, he didn't intend for you to hide it under the bed, not to hide it under the bushel. He tends for us to show... Our life, be, be for Him. Get out here in this dying world. Spread the gospel. Get out in the highways and the hedges and, do, and, and preach the word. Yes, absolutely, Brother Mike. Compel them. Get them in. You know, it's just, what kind of boldness do you have tonight? Do you have a strong boldness about you for the word of God? Are you able to stand and be strong? Be confident, have courage. Do you have that clear, vivid image that people see in Jesus in your life tonight? Do you have, maybe there's something that's holding you back from really serving God tonight. There's a place you can come and lay your burdens down. You can lay your burdens down anywhere, you know. There's a, God's altar's huge. It's an open altar. I encourage you tonight, if you don't know Him, I encourage you to get to know Him. I cry out to Him. If the Holy Spirit's dealing with you tonight, don't walk out that door. That may be the last time you ever hear that door shut. Don't step over that blood. It, there's nothing in this world worth dying and going to hell for. Absolutely nothing. I encourage you tonight, if you don't know Him, why don't you come up here and Cry out to them and talk to them. Hey, there's no better gift, no greater gift. This gift keeps on loving. It's everlasting love. When you're down in that pit, he'll reach down and pick you up, carry you up out of that pit.
But can I tell you this also? Sometimes he has to send you through a darker valley than what you're used to in order to get you up on that higher mountain. But can I tell you, he's always with you in that valley. It's easy to praise God when you're up on that mountain. But when you get down that valley, sometimes it gets a little harder to praise him. But can I tell you, he ain't going to leave you. He told, the, he told his disciples right there before he ascended out that he would not leave them comfortless. He didn't leave us comfortless either. When you get saved, Holy Ghost comes right in here. Who is that Holy Ghost tonight? He's the one that tells you how you need to be going. He'll slap you on the wrist when you start to do something that you know you ain't supposed to do. He'll speak to you and say, I don't do that. Leave it alone. Hey, if you don't know him tonight, don't, don't wait another second. It could be your last second. If you don't have that boldness that you feel like you need to have tonight, why don't you come up to the altar and pray? Get in the Word of God and study. Hey, I love you each and every one. I want to see every one of you until we get to heaven tonight. Hey, if he comes back tonight, I, I'm ready to go. I'm ready. Be better and all right, because no more worries, no more death, no more tears. That's my message for tonight. What kind of boldness do you have for God? I thought about a guy, he'd come into work, the thermo, and a lot of you would know who he was if I was mentioning his name. He's from Yancey County, and uh, he had boldness. He was going to win everybody. He did. I mean, he didn't tell, tell you about the Lord, try to get you in, but he also would turn around and get mad and kick a cabinet down and you see you can be bold and still not be bold right still not be bold right maybe as I sing this song if you need to pray won't you come be a good time I've not always been faithful but he has I'm not always been graceful, but he has. I've not always been true, but he's always come through. He has. Yes, he has. I tell him I'm not strong. He says, I am. I say I can't go on He says I can I've not loved everyone Not always overcome But he has Yes, he has He has been the greatest friend this world has ever known Yes, he has Paid the debt on Calvary all alone Yes, he has Given me a melody and song Can't see what's ahead, but he has. I can't conquer death, but he has. When I tempted to sin and I failed the test again, he passed. Yes, he passed. He has been the greatest friend.
friend this world has ever known Yes, he has But pay the debt on Calvary all alone Yes, he has Given me a melody and song I can't see what's ahead, but he has. I'm glad he knows, Jack, before it even happens, ain't you? Amen. Appreciate Brother Jeff. We do. Appreciate our preachers. And uh, let's got a lot to pray for. Let's just go, go a praying. Come back praying Wednesday night. Hopefully we'll be able to be at the Rock Altar again. Boy, I enjoyed that today, ain't you? I enjoyed the prayer room downstairs, but they just something about out yonder. And I sure do love it. Let's everybody stand, if you will. You're at liberty to go.